Before we could use the font files, the only thing we could use for coding were system fonts that are already on everybody's computer. So they have to, they don't come from the server, but they are already on your computer. And that really depends because most systems don't have that much. There are about 12 that are kind of sort of universally on every computer, Arial or Helvetica. Arial is the PC side, Helvetica is the Mac kind of equivalent, very similar looking. But these are, this is the dozen that you could use that sort of everybody has on their computer. And obviously you take out the ones that are just pure funny or have that much of a message that you can only very hardly ever use them. And then there are the really thick ones that you couldn't use as text as well. So you're left with about four fonts that you could possibly use. It's not that much, <clears throat> but they're easy to code because all you have to write is the font family, the name of the font, and sometimes times would just be called times as a fallback. And serif, if there is no times at all, maybe there's another font that is specified to be their serif uh, default font on the system. What's much more of an option now is Google Fonts, and it's growing more and more. And I think there's some good options now, and they're also easy to, to load. Like here on this, uh, this is my website. I'm using a, um, I made my own headline font there. That, that's what I'm loading for my server, the, the, the headline. But the text font, you can see, I think it's a little thin compared to the rest, a little hard to read. I'm going to in the in to the inspector to look what font I'm using here, and I can highlight it and I see it's um, Source Open Pro, a Google font that I'm loading from outside, and I wasn't too happy about it, a little bit too thin and too too um, condensed for to to read comfortably. I feel um, didn't have that that nice sturdiness that I wanted. But what could I use? I wanted something that looks really kind of New Yorkish. So I'm going to the Gothamist, see what they're using. Maybe they have a good typeface. And I, I kind of like when I read this, I think it's very easy to read. It's bolder, it's more sturdiness. It's like a little thicker. It has a, a crazy J, a big J. So it has some letters that stand out. So let me see what they're using here. So I'm looking in the inspector, see on the uh, CSS. Oh, it's called Barlow. Um, so my next step would be to find out where is Barlow from? Can I use this font? So looking, going over to Google Fonts, searching, do they have a font called Barlow? Yes, they do indeed. So it's free and it's easy to load. So I'm immediately choosing that font and copying. Oh, I'm customizing a little bit to get maybe two weights if I want an italic or if I want something. Um, the more styles you load, of course, the more time it will take to load, but maybe two will be just enough for me to have a thick and a thin in case I wanted to make something really bold. So I'm copying this fi uh, file, and this is the, the part that I'm gonna be adding into the head of my HTML. That's all I did in this video because I didn't want to make it too long. And I have a tutorial later on on how to link a Google font. But so it used to be that you had to have like a whole font stack of fallback formats because every browser would support different formats. If you had, if you were on an Explorer, you had to load a different font file than if you were on Safari or Chrome and so on. Now these days it's pretty universal that you can get away with Woof and only the Woof 2, which is the latest file, isn't supported by old explorers. Maybe there you can have one more fallback, but I don't think that, actually there are quite a few people that are using very old browsers and offices where they can't really update their browsers, but it's kind of unusual at this point. I don't know, as a designer, if you, you know, so it wouldn't really, be horrible if they just use a system font that it falls back by default. But just so you let you know, it, it won't always, like if you have a client like that, then you make sure that you have a fallback in, in your font stack. So this is the font phase rule. It's calling the name and then where the source is, is the URL on your browser. This one would be just straight next to the file. So there's no path in, in that URL to go to. And the font stack is when you put this font, plus if they don't have Elena, it would fall back to Georgia. And if there's no Georgia, it would fall back to any kind of serif font. That's called a font stack. 
There's also loading times if you have very complicated fonts, especially in languages that have a lot of symbols, Asian typefaces, for example, maybe you can load just sets of that that you're, that you're actually using instead of loading the entire font. The true type fonts is now by Apple and Microsoft, a typeface font that you can also use for print. It's most common font, font format right now, and you can always convert that one um, using font square or something like that into a WAF file that would be a web font. And I think also by now that's it's pretty universal that almost all browsers support that. Just when you see those extensions on the files, just so you know that the WAF is the web font and the true type is usually meant for print, but you can easily convert it. But uh, it's called a FOIT, F-O-I-T, is the flash of invisible text. So this happens in that second where the browser needs to load the font. It, by default, it used to be just not showing anything, but that confused people because they're expecting some kind of content. So by now, it just displays the text as a cont like your system font for a split second before it loads the actual font, depending how fast your connection and how heavy that font file is to load. But that splash, that, that little flash can really kind of um, throw somebody off. If you've started reading and all of a sudden the real font loads and it like moves everything on the page around and you get lost. You just got into reading the first sentence of this article and all of a sudden you're lost because everything keeps changing. So there's a danger on that. You just have to be aware of that and you can design it sort of matching the, the system font so it doesn't jump too much if, if, if it's possible at all. So it used to be that um, the, the flash uh, would occur when the font loaded. Now it's called the FORT. It's because um, it loads the system font first and then changes to the font that you're trying to load. So you need to load a, a few styles, maybe italic and the bold, but don't load too many because that will increase your loading time.